All right, welcome to our series of live instructional webinars designed to support the Memory Book Online Yearbook Program. Our goals today will be to introduce um, you to the functions of the program associated with the beginning stages of yearbook creation. Specifically, we will be reviewing logging into the program, familiarization with the, the welcome screen and page ladder, font selection, um, creating a replay it site, transferring material from a 22 um, MBO account to the current 23 account, and um, leading up into the next installment, the, um, the importance of sending us uh, your portrait CD provided by your school photographer. Um, this webinar um, is approximately going to be about 20 to 30 minutes, um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, now where I'm at right now, I'm just on the home page of memorybook.com. And up to the upper left here, we have a link that will take us right directly to the yearbook program. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that, take us to the login page here. Um, you can also just get here directly if you type in memoryebooks.com, and it'll bring you to this login page. So got you covered either way, whether you want to just, if you're already on the memory book site, you've got the link at the top. Um, or like I said, you just hit memoryebooks.com. It'll bring you here too. Um, so when lose, logging in, um, you'll just want to make sure that you have the correct job year uh, that was in the information sent to you by your sales rep. Currently, we're on 2023. It's because it's 22-23 school year. Then we're going to put in our job number. And we'll put in our username. And then we're going to put in our password. Now, if our passwords, or actually if our usernames and passwords, each account you start with a default advisor password and one you know, default staff password. Um, and there's different levels of access with either one of those. So your advisor login is um, basically it's your all access pass there and your staff password is kind of limited. Um, so some things the staff can do, or I mean, yeah, advisor can do anything, um, you know, lock, unlock pages where staff can only lock pages. Staff has to rely on the advisor to um, unlock a page. If a, if a staff member or those with staff access um, complete a page, um, has to have the advisor. Um, anybody can upload photos, but and organize photos uh, later on, but like only the advisor can delete those images and that. But here, I'm gonna get back to the login here just on that. So I'm just gonna go use the, an advisor access here. Uh, that way you can see all the functions as we go through. Um, so once we have our job year, job number, username and password, we'll then hit let's go. Um, real quick before I go in, we do have a forgot your password link. And we'll come around uh, here in a little bit because um, we'll show you how to set up some staff logins. Uh, that way, if you want to keep track, um, you'll have that show you how to put those in and um, how it ties back to this link right here. All right, got my login in. Let's go. Oh, okay. So when you first get into your account, you're brought up to the log or the welcome page or basically it's your dashboard here. Um, a lot of your accounts, um, you'll have a due date um, and that's it's going to be like a countdown, counting down how many days you have there. Um, we then have total pages and this is going to be a breakdown of your status. Um, you know, whether you're not started, how many pages are in progress, if you have completed pages or, you know, if you've had any submitted pages. So just kind of a quick at a glance where your progress is at. Upcoming events, uh, most accounts will show, um, you know, when when you need to have your cover in, which is November 15th. Um, you'll have, you know, when you need to get your class photos in. Um, now between the two dates on um, cover and class photos, the cover is a hard deadline. I really want that cover in by November 15th. Whereas your class photos, it's kind of a loose deadline. And by that meaning, you never know when you're gonna get a school photographer in. Um, you know, you may have um, 
some a lot of schools right now are you know they're getting their class pictures done now maybe next month your photographer comes in um, maybe your photographer comes in you know this month and maybe coming back next month to do retakes or makeups and you need to get that in um, really as long as you can get those to us you know shortly after you get those for from the photographer you still be in good shape you know if your production if you're looking to have your book submitted sometime um, early in the spring you know February March April um, the other thing we have here is the task tab um, what this is for your tasks um, basically you you and your staff or as the advisor you can come in here if I'm going to click on this um, what tasks are here uh, you can come in and create tasks for you know maybe yourself or maybe um, if you do have a yearbook staff you want to have certain stuff assigned or certain um, you know tasks or pages that you need completed um, you can come in here and add different tasks um, to do that just kind of click on this little plus here and um, let's say you know we could put candid pages or maybe you know maybe you want to have something two candid pages by Monday you know if you're keeping track um, you can then assign it to you know different students and you could put a date on that and let's see it said to by Monday so you know I'm gonna put that the 19th and I do already have um, just a generic person on the site so we're going to assign that to per person we're going to hit add and then we have our our task here that we can keep track of and just and as we're getting them done you know if you complete a task just check it and they'll show that it's done and um, you know just to help you and your staff know that you know you're making progress on the book jump back here uh, tagged images um, this module is going to let you know how many images that you have tagged in the book um, tagging images um, you know in our next installment like working with portraits we will go over you know tagging images and candid images um, basically it's it's just a way to keep track of how many times um, students or just images or particular people are used in the book um, also, just on your images, it's going to show you kind of how many have uploaded, you know, what you've received, how many total that you have in library. So this is pretty much just a, a quick breakdown once you get into the program here. Um, now, from here, um, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to set up multiple logins if you're going to have, you know, more than yourself working on, on the account. To set up your logins, we're going to go under plan. And we're going to go down to staff. Now your, um, like I said, your account does start with you know one default advisor account and one default staff account. Your um, advisor account up here, you'll notice it's kind of grayed out. We can't mark it inactive. We can only kind of edit, you know, the name that you put on it and changing your password. This is so that there's always top tier, you know, access to the account so you that you really can't get locked out or you have no way of getting back in. Um, staff accounts, though, those those can be deleted um, so that and also that this default staff one can be deleted. Um, what we do suggest is when you create staff for your account leave this generic one here just in case um, you never know if you might need to have outside help um, and you just want to give them a quick generic login to log in help you with a few things um, but yeah leave this alone leave this one kind of there um, you know kind of as an emergency um, but then for all other people you want you know, just add them on so to do that we're going to go up here and we're going to click on add staff and then we'll get a um, prompt here. We'll put in first name. We'll put in a last name. Now, the username is something completely unique to you or them. Um, or them. What we see here is a lot of times, um, 
basically for a username, it could be something, um, you know, just first initial and then, you know, last name, or maybe it's something that they have provided to you. Um, next, we're going to put in a password. Now, it, it shows that it has some dots here. This is just kind of an example of how many characters it needs. So when putting in your password, Okay, putting in your password here. Um, passwords must contain a minimum of 10 characters, um, have a lowercase letter, uppercase letter, a number. Um, so kind of basic, it doesn't need a special character, it just needs a few, you know, upper, lower, number. You can add special characters if you want to. We'll put in a password. All right, if it's all lit up in green, you're good to move on to the next spot here. Now the email spot here is optional. Um, and why this is optional, what, what this spot also helps with is this is what ties back to that forgot your password link on the home screen or on the login screen. Um, a lot of students may not have, you know, just depending on if, if you're a elementary, a um, lot of lot of the students do not have an email address. Uh, you know, once you get kind of working up to middle school, junior high, that's where they some students may have um, a school email address. Um, you know, like a, a Gmail if you're working with Google Classroom stuff. Um, but the address that, or the email that goes in here is when you click the forgot your password link, it'll send a reset to the email that is here. Um, now, in the event that you have a lot of students or when you're setting up your staff, if they don't have email addresses, that's okay. What we suggest is putting in the advisor's email address. And that is just so if one of your students clicks on or staff, um, you know, clicks on that link, then, you know, the advisor's email here, the advisor will get the reset email and can help that staff member with resetting their password. I'm just going to put one in here real quick. All right. Now, after you get all this info in, then you need to select a role. If you're a co-chair or maybe you have co-advisors, you could put that other person in as advisor. We don't really have much for here to go along with business manager. That's kind of new. Um, we don't have some of the features that go along with this. Um, but then we're, we've got staff, and this will be you know, mainly your students and that. And then we have this editor role. It's, um, the editor role is it's a staff role, basically, that has just a few more privileges. Um, such as, I, I think, proofing pages and helping with some of the setup. Um, I think they, but um, pretty much it's just uh, someone that has just a few, a little bit more areas of access. Uh, we don't see it too much being used, um, but where we do see it is maybe you have that one staff member that, you know, the program is really clicking with them. They're able to help their other staff members. And that might be something that, that you can kind of reserve for that, you know, that one person. I'm going to go ahead and make this staff. Okay, so once we have this filled in, just hit save. And now they're added to your staff list. And from here, you know, you can just keep on hitting add staff and add as many staff needed, um, you know, for the project. So we're going to jump back uh, from here. Um, we're going to go back under plan. And from here, I'm going to take you to the page ladder. OK, so the page ladder is um, is mostly a planning tool here. It's also a quick access tool here. Um, off to the side here, we have some status colors just to show you your progress going through. Those status colors are also along the outsides of the pages. So anything in red is not started. Once you begin a page, then you'll see it kind of come through. 
as far as, you know, in progress, that'll be yellow. Once you complete a page, it'll be outlined in green. And once you finally submit it and send that page in, then, um, then you're gonna see a black outline along these pages. Okay, now one thing, um, what we have up at the top here to kind of get started is we have this little, you know, loading your section descriptions from last year. So this is going to help with, um, you know, loading, uh, you know, next to each page you'll see a section description spot. If you had anything, if, if you're a returning customer, um, you know, you did last year's yearbook, um, if you filled in the page ladder last year, when you hit load last year's descriptions and sections, it will fill in this information down through here. Um, so if you had typed anything in before and you'd click this, you'll get this message, um, you know, just, are you sure? And because it's gonna delete whatever is currently there and replace it with last year's data. Um, once you do this, it cannot be undone. Um, unless you just go back in and type back over it. So I'll hit load. So it looks like I did have some stuff filled in. So it's, you know, principal's page, teacher of the year, anything like that. Now, another thing uh, that you can bring over from last year is load last year's page designs. What this will do, and I'll go ahead and just click it here, hit load. What this does is it brings over your layouts from last year, but it's gonna bring them over in template form. Um, basically what that means is, you know, photos are taken out and text is reverted back to just a default filler type. Now, also what you can do here on this page ladder, um, so if you, you know, bring stuff over and let's say either maybe, you know, last year's crew didn't set up section descriptions, or maybe you don't want to load last year's descriptions. Maybe you want to just use the layouts, but plan plan a new plan or a new plan of action here. To fill in the section description information, if, if you take your mouse and hover about right here, about an inch to the right of this, and just click in this area, it'll open up the fields here. So um, examples of what section and description info, this is, this is anything how you want your pages to be. It's, it's really your own notes going into this area. Um, but maybe as far as, you know, a section, it could be, you know, staff pages, or it could be class pages or candid pages. And maybe as far as a description, maybe it's uh, third grade. You know, whatever you need this to be. Um, and the importance of filling out a page ladder in that is to kind of keeping a plan of action. Um, you can go through here. Okay, what does this page need to be? Okay, class pages, it's third grade. And that way it kind of helps you stay focused on what that needs to be. And also as you're setting up these section descriptions and getting everything ironed out, um, the more you kind of plan this is it will help reduce the, basically if, if you find that you have stuff out of order later, um, it kind of reduces you having to, you know, having to move stuff around to make it fit somewhere in the book. Um, so just basically it's more or less, you know, it's keeping you on track or it's letting you know what it needs to be. It's also helping your staff um, in the book, um, you know, with completing their goals and letting you know, okay, I know I need to be, you know, have the third grade on this page and so on. So really important info um, that you put in here to help keep track. Now, once you start typing this info in, one thing you will need to do is once you get section description information in is if you're ready to move on or do something else, before you do that, make sure you come up here to the upper left and click on the save all button. And that way it just saves this information. That way it's always there for you. Okay, now from here, um, you know, once you get templates loaded, section description in, 
another thing that you can do to get started is going through and adding fonts to your collection. So we're going to go up to plan and I'm going to go down to fonts. Now your account or your job here starts with um, two default fonts. You have um, just basically just a basic serif font and a sans serif font, um, but you start with two. Now from there, when you come in here, um, it has every single font in alphabetical order. Um, you can try to put in a font name if, if you're familiar, you've been in, if you know something. Um, really the best kind of way I found is if you go under type, you can look at the different sections. So, you know, are you wanting something for just um, a normal font or a serif font? Um, now, if I click on one of these, it's going to preview it off to the right here. So serif fonts have the little tails around the, around the lettering. Sans serif is just, you know, blocked off, no tails or anything, kind of a cleaner look there. If you're looking for something to put on your fun pages or candid pages, that's where you can get to decorative. So you'll have, you know, all your different decorative fonts there. Now to use any of the fonts, just come over and toggle it from inactive to active. And that's all you need to do. Um, one thing we do recommend when adding fonts um, is usually, you know, if you're looking for a more cohesive look, you may not probably add more than 20 fonts to your collection. Or, you know, if you really kind of want to narrow down things, um, you know, this is what you want for your headlines, this is what you want for subheads, this is what you want for your class names, or, you know, the, the names on the pages, you may just choose just a, a handful of fonts. Um, there are certain times um, when it's probably best not to use certain fonts. I'm going to get into the script fonts here. Um, one thing we kind of... Um, might watch for with script fonts is if you're on a plain background, great. Um, but it's when the thin script fonts are on busy backgrounds is where some of that gets kind of lost. It, it may, you know, if some of the lettering might catch into some of the design and you can't really read that as well. Um, so that's just something to look out for um, when you're picking, you know, thin, you know, a thin script font on a busy background a lot of times just, just does not work out well. Um, now from here, uh, we're gonna go back under plan. We got styles. Um, now what styles are, these are basically your font, your account starts with five, five styles here. Um, this is how basically what these are, or these tie into the text boxes, additional text boxes you can add onto the pages. Um, so when you grab like a headline style text box and add it to the page, it just starts as whatever this font and font, you know, size and style is. Um, to add a style, oh, click add style. Um, but then, you know, you could make your own style and you know you can name it let's just say candid page we could do headline and here's where we can go through the fonts that we had selected we can choose a size in this one some do not have different attributes and what what this is it's um you know it doesn't have bold italics underline um, some fonts just are, you know, what they are and don't have anything like that. And then you hit save. Now, there we go. Now what this is, is now once we have this style, if you're like working on some of your other pages, when you go to the text tab, and that more will come when we get to our building activity pages, is you've just set a text box up to when you drag that style onto a page, it just starts that text box off in that font style and size. So there's, those are styles. Um, from here, we're gonna go back under plan and we're gonna go down and click on replay it. Um, tell you what, real quick, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna jump out to a different account here real quick. 
got in this demo I already have it set up so I'm gonna sign out of this one I'm gonna jump into a different demo here real quick and that way I can show you one just from a fresh start here okay we're gonna go under plan we're gonna go under replay it okay um, setting up the replay it site pretty simple here just a few things to put in uh, it's going to ask you do you want to have a website for parents and others to upload images um, for the yearbook staff of course you do you're going to click check you're going to enter a start date now when putting in your date information be sure to follow the date format exactly how it is um, because what will happen is and I'll show you here if we don't put this setup in exactly like like it is so I'm gonna start with this and in this case I'm, I'm gonna leave out the dashes um, if you want to get your your site going um, that day I'd put in the date that is there um, now as far as when you're putting in an end date Make sure you're putting in, you know, when this is going to close, usually about a week or two before your submission date. That way it gives you enough time to, to finally, you know, fully go through the rest of the images and make sure you can get those into the book for publication. And I'm just going to put this at March 31st. And I'm going to go, just going to leave it defaults at 10,000 images, which is more than enough. Uh, basically what's uh, and you can adjust this number um, but basically what this is is once the um, inbox their the replay it inbox hits that max it no longer allows people to upload images to it um, 10,000 more than enough than we've ever seen so it's good to leave it like that and then the last one is do you want the site enabled okay so once you have all this in now I'm going to go ahead and click save, but I just want to show you what happens when you don't have the dates and all that in correctly. So if you hit save, it blanks out the setup and then you basically um, kind of have to start over. So I'm going to go back and do this real quick. Make sure to put in the dashes just like the format. I'm going to put in the start date as today. put my end date back in now another thing when putting in your end date um, make sure that you're not putting in a date that has passed like if this if I put this in is March 31st 2022 that will blank out this setup as well so just make sure you know you're if you're going over into the next year just make sure that you're putting in 2023 we got our max number of images do you want the site enabled and we're going to hit save now if everything's in correctly and we hit save we're going to get the user ID but more importantly we're going to get this link here now this link um, very I mean this is the best thing to get out to anyone that you want contributing images um, you know you can if I can get in and do this better we can hide highlight it and I didn't want to grab everything else there but okay so if you highlight it you can copy and paste that into an email a text message uh, getting it out there to your school community now this direct link um, basically it's a direct link in goes past the login screen and right there ready for who's ever uploaded hit choose images and you know select their images and put in their information and submit those um, this this link is you know you're good to put it on your school's website you're good to put it on um, you know if you do a if your school has a email system that does you know school, like an email blast great for there um, one place we don't recommend putting this on is Facebook um, one thing about their their system is once you post on Facebook Facebook kind of alters or edits that link behind the scenes and it doesn't let people in it takes people to the login screen um, and even there it doesn't quite work correctly when even putting in the user ID 
Um, so like I said, um, you know, school website, school email blast, regular email, text message, uh, but just, just avoid um, Facebook. So with this direct link, because I'll click on it here real quick, and that brought us right in to where we could hit choose files, select our images, and put in our information and submit those. Also what we have here, if you just want to hand out flyers, we have the uh, private submission flyer here. So if you click on this, okay, I'm going to have to bring something over here real quick. So this here where you'll get a flyer, you know, you can put in, has editable fields to where you can put in, you know, when your submit date is. And also it has a spot here for that login ID, um, which is, this part right here that you can copy and paste and put into that flyer. Um, but like I said, the best way to get people in is just to use this link right here. Um, so here is how how you'll kind of set up and get started and playing you know planning your yearbook. Um, so you use the page ladder to kind of set out your pages. You'll use the staff area to set up your logins fonts to add in your you know your font you know fonts and styles to add in uh, kind of the text look that you want and replay it is to get that set up and have the community help get images in um, now before um, closing out um, one thing we will kind of go over is sending um, you know sending in your class photo CDs um, a lot of times these days um, CDs are kind of on the out and a lot of you may be getting links from your photographers. Um, so what you'll do there is, you know, if, if you're provided a with a CD um, in a kit that goes out to you, there is a padded envelope in there. Drop the CD in on the on one side of it. There is a, a portrait form. Um, let you know, you know, you'll put your school info in there, your job number, school name, your name. Um, but then it also has option of how you want those sorted. And uh, the two sort methods are by grade level or by teacher homeroom. Um, by grade is everybody in one grade will end up in one folder, where a teacher homeroom option is more broken down by individual class. Um, now let's say that you get a link from your photographer. What will you do in that case? Um, hold off from downloading anything. Um, a lot of times what you'll want to do is just forward that on to your sales rep here. And you're going to let them in the, in the email know how you would like those uploaded. Um, again, by grade, everybody together, or by teacher homeroom, um, which is going to be broken down uh, more by class. Um, so that is, um, really all that we had to, to cover for the evening. Um, we can open this for a little bit of Q and A just on the material that we've covered here, uh, maybe for, you know, five, 10 minutes. Um, if you do have any questions, um, you know, put those into the, to the chat box over to the side and, um, we'll go ahead and I can address some of those while we're here. Okay, I'm not seeing anything coming through, which which hopefully is a good thing. <laughs> um, okay, um, so with um, um, adding images here, um, we're gonna we're gonna go over those um, later in a building activity. That, um, but basically. Um, if you want or if you have your yearbook guide handy, the kind of spiral guide that is there to going over uploading your images, um, 
basically you'll want to um, check out page 174 in your yearbook guide and that will go over how to get your pro image you know your candidates and that in the program like I said we're going to be going over that next webinar on how to get them uploaded um, from there is once they're uploaded there's um there's an images tab where you can just drag and drop them into the pages but like I said we're going to go over that more more later so um, if you're signed up for those, awesome. We will we will get that information to you. Um, you now, if you go ahead and um, you know start getting into the book, you have any questions, you know, just as you're getting on, if you find stuff yourself, um, you know, you can give us a call one in eight seven seven three zero two three one four zero. We'll gladly help you out there, um, or or you can email us at memorybooktechsupport at jostens.com and we can get a quick answer back to you there as well. So thank you for joining joining me today. So hopefully by showing examples um, in the areas of you know login screen, welcome page, page ladder, fonts, replay it, uh, creating your book will be look like less of a challenge and you can avoid some of the pitfalls that kind of accompany any computer software. So transferring material from last year's site and sending us your portrait CD should pay off in some time savings down the road. So feel free, join us in a couple of weeks as we begin preparing you for the autoflow function and building some class pages. Um, so we'll see you then. Have a good afternoon. Have a good evening, everybody.